I have here with me Nicole Young. She is a freelance web developer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Say hi, Nicole. Hey guys, what's up? And uh, I just reached out to her on Instagram. I actually came across a post of top uh, tech people, like women of color in tech. Um, so I wanted to start reaching out to some of them to see if I can get some information and see. I would like to get some more perspectives of like women in the industry, especially like women of color, um, because I think that perspective um, is so like underrepresented. You know, obviously women of color and women in general are underrepresented in the tech industry, but. Um, I kind of want to use my platform to kind of, you know, ex shed some more exposure uh, to you because I would love to see more people looking like me uh, in the tech industry. And I know people who are looking to join it that look like us are also looking for that. So I really appreciate you taking the time to agree to this interview. Um, so yeah, I just want to get into a couple of questions to see, uh, get, you, get your perspective on your experience. So um, when it came to getting into the tech industry, what ex what inspired you to join that? Like, how did you lead? What led you to join in the tech industry? So it was actually kind of an accident. I wasn't intending to get into the tech industry, to be honest. I um, I had uh, done like a, a gap year, sort of. I was uh, living abroad for a year after I graduated college, um, and. I had intended to go to do a PhD program in psychology, which is what I was studying. But that year that I spent in Southeast Asia kind of completely changed what I wanted to do, changed my trajectory. So when I came back home and was looking for a job, I just kind of jumped into things that would let me kind of work with my hands a little bit more, like be more involved than like, the high level PhD, like researching type of stuff that I would have been doing. So um, I got a job in digital marketing and I enjoyed it. It was cool. It was in the nonprofit sector, but we were working out of a, uh, like an, a tech incubator, like a startup incubator at the time. So it was a co working space with a lot of other startups. And uh, one of the startups was a tech startup that was about like in its first year. And they needed people to help build up their learning database for the artificial intelligence model that they were using. And I just jumped on. I didn't know anything about artificial intelligence at the time, didn't really know much about what the company did, but it sounded interesting. Um, so I just jumped on as like just a part-timer at that time. Um, but then as I learned how to do it, like working with Python to kind of uh, help uh, train that model and stuff like that. I just really started to enjoy it and just ran with it So that's kind of how I tripped into tech in a way Well, that's actually really cool because when I first uh, Started getting into tech. I started off as a web designer as well I was doing freelancing like building like WordPress sites and basic using basic website builders And I ended up wanting to have a little bit more control over it and that kind of led me into like learning how like what web development actually is and getting into coding and you know javascript and things of that nature so that's actually really cool so your first like trip into tech was ai basically yeah so we were we were um using computer vision which is crazy like that's a huge jump from literally a beginner to just being in it and it was so fun it was really enjoyable and i learned so much which i'm really grateful for to have that experience because Tech is so broad, and I know artificial intelligence is definitely going to take over. So I'm grateful that I had the chance to kind of get uh, a, a chance to kind of experience it and learn about it really deeply. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for sure, and I definitely agree that artificial intelligence is kind of one of the ways to go. Uh, I know that's art, like machine learning and artificial intelligence are one of the like faster growing industries, especially here in America. Um, so I think that's something that. Um, really gives you a leg up that you like hit the ground running with AI like I, I aspire to start learning like AI and machine learning like I have to take the time to learn Python because I haven't like dove deep into that yet um, but I think that's re that's really cool so uh, how long have you been uh, freelancing for um, I've only been freelancing uh, since the beginning of, of this year so January is when I like officially started um, and it's been interesting because of the pandemic and everything. So I can't really say that my experience has been um, like the typical one, but it's definitely been a journey and taking it as it comes, you know, just trying to figure it, figure out the ropes uh, 
as it goes, you know. Yeah, that's usually how it happens. I've always been curious about uh, freelancing as a developer because, like I said, I did freelancing as a as a web designer in the past, and like the uh, that uttermost development I did was like working on like you know web WordPress sites, configuring plugins, maybe doing a a couple of lines of PHP here and there, but it was nothing like super deep. Um, but that's actually really cool. So how did it feel like starting your own like kicking off freelancing? Like, were you worried at all or afraid or? Um, it was, it was interesting. And I, when I first started was still very much so like learning and figuring things out myself. Um, so I was lucky to have some experience in digital marketing that I paired with some of the development stuff and like kind of offered it as like a full, like integrated marketing package. Like, Hey, I can do your website, but I can also help you with, um, some of the, the digital marketing aspect of it too. Um, so that definitely helped me to kind of um, figure out how to integrate my new skills in, in development into uh, the whole freelancing thing. So I definitely, when I, when people ask me, I definitely recommend pairing it with other skills that you have. If you have other skills that you can um, kind of match with it, because it definitely helped me to, to learn the ropes while I was still, um, you know, learning and stuff. I hear you. So when you, um, did you decide to go straight from the experience that you had with AI to doing freelancing or did you work at a company beforehand? I was working with a company and um, just the experience was very isolating. I was very like, um, I was experiencing like burnout and like the work culture was getting to a really toxic place. And I actually decided to quit very uh, abruptly. I just kind of got to a point where it was like my mental health and my well-being was like just had to be more important at that point. Um, so I quit pretty abruptly and it was right before the holidays actually. So I gave myself that time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And then I jumped into uh, freelancing at the beginning of the year. So it's all kind of, you know, still new, but that's gotcha. how it worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. So when it came to uh, actually joining the tech industry, you know, anywhere from like when you first started to becoming a freelancer, what do you feel like the hardest adjustment you, um, has been that you had to make? Huh, that's a good question. Um, I would say one very difficult adjust adjustment for me because I wasn't really that um, experienced in tech at all was just kind of learning the lingo and understanding how to navigate tech spaces so that I could make connections and could um, kind of grow and and learn from the people that were around me um, and I was kind of I was getting into a completely different industry than what I was you know studying in college so it was that like culture change was was something that was really difficult for me um, at the time. So yeah, I would say that that part for sure. I got you. And when you actually got your first job, you know, um, as a developer, was it or was that job or the industry like what you expected it to be? Um, so my first job was freelancing, um, and it's still like I said, it's very interesting to kind of navigate because I don't have a traditional uh, background or like um, career path I guess yet um, I'm hoping that like once things settle down with the pandemic and um, I grow or you know scale what I'm doing with freelancing that that will will change and I'll have other opportunities to, to be involved with more serious projects or you know just uh, deeper projects but um, it's definitely been, it's just a learning process every day, just taking it as it comes, you know, so. Yeah, for sure. So, and just to clarify for everybody who's watching, your background, is that solely consistent of just that tripping into tech and, you know, getting your experience from, from that internship or did you do any formal education, like any types of trainings or anything like that? So, I mean, I, yeah, so I just kind of, accidentally got into that tech role um, and I was there for two years and it was a startup if you have any experience with startups or if you ever get a chance to it's like it's like learning at warp speed because it's like every day you're just trying to like 
build your, we always have the saying that you're building the ship while you're out at sea. It's like really like trying to figure it out how to make it work while you're actually doing it. And yeah. so I was able to learn very quickly. Um, and it was actually kind of forced to learn quickly to be able to be good at my job. So I was really, um, lucky in the sense to have that experience for those two years to kind of like learn as much as I needed to being exposed to coding um during that time too like um so yeah it was it was that was my main background in learning and stuff and then I took on uh projects on my own and you know like online courses and things like that to learn deeper um have deeper understanding in coding and what I'm doing with web development so yeah gotcha that makes sense. Um, so, have you? How do you deal with? Uh, well, what, I guess in that one job um, that became like you know burnout, and you know you was being overworked, and you was trying to learn stuff really quickly. I mean, that's every like developer's nightmare is have to be in a job that acts that does that. Unfortunately, that is the case with a lot of like you know salary jobs. Um, my salary job, I've sometimes got to the point where I've began the first symptoms of burnout and I've kind of had to reel things back um, because it's so easy to kind of fall into that. Um, yeah. So when it came into like either in that role or, uh, you know, starting out freelancing, like how did you, how did you handle adversity? Um, so for me, I tried uh, a lot of things throughout the time in that the first job. Um, so for me, I tried to be very open and, and communicative with the, the people who were like in roles above me, the people in the team that I manage. Like I tried to um, be very open, communicate as effectively as I could um, about those types of like any issues that, you know, smaller issues that come up throughout, you know, time working with a team. Um, and that kind of can help ease the, the frustration um, when you're just like addressing it as soon as it, it happens. And then um, I use, we had unlimited paid time off <laughs> in that job. So I used as much of it as I needed to throughout, like space it out as I could. Um, when I really needed it, when I felt myself feeling burnt out, um, and, uh, being able to find a community in, in the tech industry in Pittsburgh where I'm at, like that really helped me. So I found, um, a group of women in tech um, that were, you know, from all different kinds of backgrounds, different, um, you know, people of color, women of color, and was able to connect with them. And that definitely helped me as well, just being able to see that my experiences weren't just unique to me and it wasn't something I was necessarily doing wrong, but it's just a, a symptom of a larger issue that's happening in tech. So that kind of helped me um, as well, kind of navigate and figure it out. For sure. I feel you. I get that. And it's really nice to have like those kind of support groups. Some of the, the women's support group that you joined, um, was that something that you found like through like your coworkers or was that something you found online? Like how did you come across that? Yeah. So I decided to, when I, I decided that I really did enjoy my job and that I wanted to kind of really pursue my opportunities in tech, I decided to kind of find I got more involved on social media and on LinkedIn and things like that and got connected with people in my area. Um, and you know, there were a few women in the job that I was working in that would like in our Slack group kind of just say, Hey, like there's this event that we know that's going on and some of us would attend together. And I found a lot of cool opportunities through that. Um, and there is like a nonprofit here called Women Tech Pittsburgh. And it started by Allison Falk. She's kind of big in the in the cyber security world. And um, when I saw that they were having events and things like that, I decided that I would start attending them just to get you know more involved with what was going on because I was really interested in figuring out if uh, the whole like issues in lack of diversity was just an issue within my company or if it was like a larger issue. And I wanted to kind of get people's opinions outside of my company and um, so going to those events was really helpful so LinkedIn I think was the biggest at the time that I was getting connected with people outside of my company for you know 
finding community and stuff like that. That makes sense. And that's actually really cool. Um, I think it's really important to be able to have the, that sort of support network, especially when you're in a um, in an industry that is, I mean, there is a big, obviously every, most people, if not everyone knows that there's a, a diversity issue in tech. Um, mm -hmm. just because now people, not only just like, you know, women, but people of color in general are just now gaining more access to, um, the ability to learn those things, you know, yeah. even before it was like formal education. I mean, you granted, granted, you had some people who were, who had the ability to get self self-taught, but now there's such a plethora of resources available mm -hmm. through like, you know, formal education, informal, whether it's a college or boot camp um you know skillshare and coursera udemy you know you have a lot of different options that i think has kind of opened uh the floodgates and for potential developers to kind of learn and grow their skills um personally one of the things i want to be able to do is contribute to sharing that message you know across like my community and a community of people who look kind of like me um mm -hmm. to be able to recognize um the opportunity there and using that as a vehicle you know to change their life you know to get into a better you know socioeconomic situation especially because like you know growing up we we didn't my family didn't have a whole lot starting out we weren't you know terrible but it, i know that my family history had my family had a history of not having a whole lot and i wanted to change that direction and i saw tech as an opportunity to do that um mm -hmm. and i'm really glad i pursued it because i was able to you know land a decent job you know, I'm making decent money compared to like, you know, most people, my, you know, our age and it's already kind of set that course and gave me a head start um, to kind of build in that dynasty. Um, so I think that I want to, I definitely appreciate um, that you seem based on like your Instagram and some of the things that you've said, you've talked about, it seems like you have a similar goal of being able to spread that message um, and spread those opportunities. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, that resonates with me a lot because I, I have the exact same goals of like, seeing uh my background and um like the same thing just wanting to give other people that opportunity to kind of take things further than what they had when they were growing up so oh, yeah. that. so what do you love your, the most about being a freelancer um right now i really enjoy being in control of my work and what I take on and where I work from, that kind of stuff. I, I enjoy this freedom, having the, the two years of a very intense, fast-paced work environment where I was, um, I don't want to say I was a slave to it, but like it was just very intense and I was very dedicated to trying to, you know, be the best that I could be. A lot of my time was not my own, so it's nice to kind of be able to decide now and have a lot more control over over that and freedom over it. So I'm enjoying it right now. So we'll see how it goes. That's really cool. I mean, I was it's funny. I was um, one of the books I was uh, recently listening to was called um, "So Good They Can't Ignore You," um, and one of the things they talk about is uh, part one of the factors that people have when they love their job is having that sort of autonomy. Um, uh -huh. And for you, having complete control over your schedule, your process of how you work and like doing things your way, um, that being one of your favorite things just clicks immediately for me. And I totally understand that um, being that, you know, I'm working from home currently, so I have a lot more control over how I kind of flow through the day, which is really nice because I don't have to worry about people like constantly like looking at me and, you know, mm -hmm. I can, uh, you know, eat, you know, my meals here at the house and I can wake up and just come sit at the computer and just start grinding, you know? And that's something that I think has allowed me to feel uh, not only a lot more productive, but just a lot more comfortable in general. But mm -hmm. I know not everybody, you know, enjoys working from home that same way. So but that's yeah. really cool. When you, uh, got your, when you got your job, the one that you didn't enjoy that much, that you had to leave, uh, what was the interview process like? Was it difficult at all? It wasn't. Um, it was interesting because it was like this, super brilliant uh, PhD in data science, sat me down and showed me basically the process of um, how they input the data. And he was like, do you think you could do this if I trained you on it? And I was like, yeah, like sure, definitely. Like he showed me, I was like, this seems simple enough, like almost too simple the way he was showing it to me. Um, and I was like, yeah, and especially um, they were offering the training for for it I was like yeah I mean why not and I'm someone that I always like opportunities to learn new things especially if it's for free so I was like 
let's do it, you know? So um, it wasn't very intense, but most of the interview experience was just really random um, that I have in tech is on the other end of like interviewing other people. Cause I ended up in a position where I was um, doing a lot of intake interviews and things like that uh, for hiring. So um, as a hire, like I was a manager for a team that I was hiring for. So yeah, I haven't had that other experience and that is a little intimidating, but I do want to kind of get some experience with that just so that I can help people down the line with it. <laughs> I hear you. So have you, have you applied to a bunch of jobs before you got that one? Um, before I got the one with an AI? Um, no, after you start, after you started learning AI, before you got the job that you left, were you applying to a lot of different places or was that just kind of like another happenstance like opportunity? It was, it was, it was kind of, it was, it was just happenstance. Um, a lot of the opportunities I've gotten um, in the last few years have been because of um, early on, I was really dedicated to building up my network. And so a lot of it was like, hey, I know this person and you might be interested in this. And that was very, um, very nice to have people looking out for you, I guess, um, in mm -hmm. a sense, knowing what I was interested in and what I had shown um, interest in and just kind of saying, I think you'd be interested in this person and this opportunity. So that was really helpful early on. That's awesome. And yeah, I feel like I can make a whole video about the importance of networking. Um, yeah. You are obviously like a, you know, role model for that because it's yeah. already granted you so many opportunities yeah. that uh, probably wouldn't happen without it. So that's really cool that you, um, that you put in the work early on and that mm -hmm. you already started reaping the benefits for that. So in your, so when you think, and you, may, you may or may not have any, but uh, when you look at your future in the tech industry, assuming that you plan on staying in it for the next receiver, uh, what do you feel like your career goals and your social goals are with it? That's such a good question. And I think about this a lot. Um, and sometimes it, it shifts around a lot, but ultimately I want to be, known for I want to leave a legacy for being someone that was kind of like a bridge in the same way you were talking about helping people to especially people of color black people to to up their skills and get into this wave of tech I want to be known as someone that helps bridge people bridge that gap between our community and communities that are underrepresented in tech and really taking full advantage of all of the amazing things that are happening in the industry. Um, so I definitely, you know, want to build things. I want to help people. I have so many like small projects building wise that I want to do. Um, but that's ultimately to kind of give myself, um, I guess the autonomy um, to, or the capital to then help. Ultimately, I want to, build lots of, of the cool ideas that I have um, to then provide opportunities and spaces where people in our community can then learn the skills that they need to take advantage of everything that's going on in tech and all of the crazy, amazing things that are happening so that we can get a piece of that big pie that yeah. is, is being made because there's so much opportunity and I don't want to see our community just get left behind in all of it because we've exactly. been left behind like, enough. There's, exactly, there's room for everyone to eat, and I think that's, some, that's something that's really hard. Um, I wouldn't say it's really hard, but I feel like that's something that it that's that's like a that's such. I feel like that's a concept, a social concept that's kind of been instilled in us is that like everybody has to try and, and you know find their bag and they have to hold on to it because if they share yeah. it, they might lose the opportunity for themselves. But the tech industry is so huge and it moves so fast and continuously evolves that there is room to bring all kinds of just wealth into the community. And I think it's really important to kind of like to feed those people, you know, that information. Um, I just think that it's something that personally I want to try and work on. Um, I know that's one of my social goals is to try and be um, more active with my channel. I, yeah, I've been really bad about posting videos consistently, but I kind of want to kickstart it again by reaching out to a lot of people in our community to try and, you know, pull that information from real people who have real experiences, you know, from start to wherever they are currently. Um, so 
you know, there's plenty of examples of like, yo, I can do it. You can do it too. And there's no excuses. All you got to do is want it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Me too, man. I'm, I'm excited. That pumps me up when I meet people who are trying to do the same thing. Cause I agree. Like, I think that we have been taught in a way to, to feel like I have to keep everything, all the opportunity to myself. Um, I got to keep all my secrets to myself and not share them because um, again, like you said, like then I will miss out and it's, that's not the case at all. And I think that the more that know uh, a little bit of this over here, a little bit of that over there and bring that information together, the more impact that we can have um, on our entire community. So that's what I'm here for. That's awesome. Well, that concludes all the questions that I have for you. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of answer these and give us your perspective um, and your experience on your awesome, like happenstance journey getting into tech and, you know, kicking off as a freelancer. I obviously wish you all the wealth and opportunity. Um, Can you go ahead and tell us what your Instagram tag is? That way everybody can go and follow you. I'm gonna put it up on the screen, obviously, but just for the audience. Um, it's at Nicole.young for Instagram. Sweet. And I'll make sure it's up on the screen so you guys can follow. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And I hope that, uh, maybe I can get you on another interview again, talking about, you know, the tropes of being a freelancer or, uh, how you kind of got started networking. So that way people can have some more information on that. For sure. And I will definitely be having people on my channel as well, like interviewing and just sharing people's stories on there. So I'm going to have to have you on too so that we can spread your, your journey to everybody too. So I'd be happy to, and I'll definitely uh, make sure you send me that link. I'll definitely put your channel link in the description so that way people can go check it out. Um, I'm all about cross promoting, you know, other people who are upcoming on YouTube. So I think that'd be really great, but nice. uh, that's all I got. If anything else, uh, I'll catch you another time. Definitely. Thank you so much for this. It was so fun. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you.